So, all right. Why are you recording already? I haven't given you consent. You're supposed to ask for my consent. You're yes. supposed to ask. You're supposed to ask. <laughs> do you? As I live in the state of Florida, do you, do I have your consent to record you? You're supposed to ask for that first. I usually only take interviews from national networks and people with over a hundred thousand followers. So we'll probably little, hit that after today. I'm a little insecure right now with 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 what's going on here, but uh, you know. I wrote I like a letter to, to my spiritual guru, um, and he said I should do it. So that's why I'm doing it. If, if, you, if he said yes, then we, who are you following? <laughs> How do you submit to he or she? Like I just said, spiritual guru. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna start with this setup. Yeah. Where, you Does know, my background and everything look good? Hang on. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. basketball under the TV. Let me grab that. Well, you don't want people to know you play basketball. You just looked up. And then we'll add you in. So hopefully you're not doing that when I add you in. I'm like burping right now, bro. Dude, that's your house, man? That's Me? his basement. Yeah. You thought that was a background? Yeah. No, no. What do you yeah. do for a living? This. I work. <laughs> I work. <laughs> this, this, we, we get our money from this. You get your money from all the... Some samosas you're selling on Shiona. All right, welcome to Warp Warp Curse. <laughs> I love it. So Hang what happens when you have a when you have a professional guest? We have to pretend. All right, welcome to Warp Curry. My name's Gary Patel, and I'm Yogi. Today we have a special guest. Uh, been trying to get him on here for a while. Uh, he's been on CNN. He's been on Fox News. He's a world-renowned doctor. He's been in many articles. He's been in uh, newspapers, online articles. And today is probably the pinnacle of his career where he is now on our podcast. Uh, we welcome Dr. Jamin Brumbuck. I am so excited to be here. You know, every year I make a list of things I want to accomplish. And getting on your podcast has been on my list for the past 10 years. And so to finally be a part of it, I appreciate it so much. And I appreciate being a part of this. And I hope I can I can um I can meet your standards of all the other guests that you've had on, Gary Patel and Yogi, who only goes by his first name. Did do you I don't know if you know Yogi or have ever met him? I remember him from our Boston days. We didn't interact much because we were in different schools, but I do remember so speaking him, he was that. very popular. He was very popular. Uh, with the ladies and the guys, uh, and I was just a nerd at Boss University. So, speaking of that, do you remember? So there was a a Bhangra competition, which yeah. we had gone to, yeah. um, and they had some audio video issue, and I brought my doll into the audience just to you know cause a ruckus and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you were from BU, I was from Northeastern. So basically, um, they called at me on stage and said, yo, you got a duel? Come up on stage. So I was like, all right. And then they call someone from Northeastern, from some other school, and BU. Um, and for, for BU, Mr. Jamin Brumbutt is the one who no. is selected from the audience. Shut up. He comes on stage. Really? And they're like, play something on the duel. So I played a beat, and all three of you were supposed to dance, and then the audience voted on who was the best dancer. It definitely wasn't me. It was 100% you. My, my dancing career was very, very short. <laughs> maybe like because other, of other uh, things. like other. Maybe things. as a result <laughs> of that day. <laughs> By the way, how's my hair? Is it good? Your hair is freaking great. Both of your hairs are great. Both of you have your, hair. Your hair looks good too, bro. <laughs> I'm glad you called that out because I wanted to make an adjustment. Yeah, yeah. How, how's my... There we go. Okay, all right. It's good. Okay, all right. But you're a, a doctor, um, a urologist. Um, I had a title for this, um, which was... <laughs> I mean, you had a title for this, doctor, um, that we can't probably say or type up um, because you kept telling me to do some topic with that, and I'm not going to do Here, that. Can I just tell you something? Go ahead. Like the way you have your microphone, it just makes me think about your <laughs> and like 10,000 things All that right, we could move it over to the side like, a little bit. <laughs> like, it's just like yeah, it's this so is a problem. distracting. Let me let me ask you a question before and we you get like to the make real love thing. to that microphone like 
you, you had a choice in college to pick man parts or women parts. Why did you go with women parts? So, Garrett, uh, just to let you know how the medical school um, and residency and becoming a physician comes. In college, we do not pick man parts or women parts. Uh, <laughs> when but, you had a uh, choice. Uh, no, 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 actually, I went to 14 years of education. So I got in, I went to BU, Boston University undergrad, and I got into BU med school early. And it's in med school where you kind of decide what specialty you want to go to. There's multiple specialties. And it's not even till your third year when you actually decide what you want to go to. Because because you spend a lot of time in different categories. So you may be in surgery for a couple of weeks, then you'll be in pediatrics, then you'll be in internal medicine. You may be in urology as an elective. You may do emergency medicine. So you, you kind of get a good feel, and that's when you kind of commit to something. So I didn't really have to commit to my specialty until my third year of medical school. Now, so once you commit, you're going to get into your specialty, but the unknown factor, as you mentioned, Yogi, is where you're going to go because it's a match. So I actually interviewed at 14 different places at 14 different programs for urology, and I matched uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, at the University of Tennessee. Go volunteers. Woo-woo. Um, and that's where I went, and I spent five years there. But the education that you get, regardless of where you go, is pretty standardized. What makes every place unique is the location you're in, the people you're with, and the hospital systems you work with. But every urologist that graduates after five or six years, because the programs are a little different, should have the basic core knowledge and skills it takes to be a surgeon. And I've followed you for many years when you were doing the uh, drive stalking, for men's health. Stalking is probably a better word that you've stalking. done. Yeah. When you were doing the uh, drive for men's health uh, with the first Tesla and you, you know, I followed your career, you had a different practice and now you're, uh, as far as I know, a partner or owner of the practice that you're with no, right now. Same, same practice. I'm still employed by the same people. I'm, I'm glad that both you did your research. <laughs> I didn't say anything. This did is, him. Just, did this not is just, him going off. Did, <laughs> sorry, we did, can cut that out. Let's start this again. No. So knowing that you've been at the same practice <laughs> for the last 20 years. You uh, have the biggest guest you've ever asked to come on your podcast. <laughs> and you're no, going you're based biggest. on assumptions from Instagram. <laughs> you're not the biggest. You're the first. <laughs> this is definitely, this is, this is not warp curry. This is mystery curry. It, that's we can say whatever we want because it's called warp curry. None of it has to ma make sense. That's the beauty of this. If I had made it make sense, then uh, we would have to. But luckily, nothing we say has to. But uh, no, I mean your career has been pretty impressive. As a doctor, you have three daughters. That is part of the reason why I wanted to do this mental health thing. Um, you know, Yogi has two boys, and I've known him. You know, we talk almost every day. I know what he kind of... I didn't of... even know you two were friends. <laughs> no. He's from Boston, dude. I'm from. I'm originally from Boston. But, but I didn't even know you guys were this type of yeah. level of friends. Like, Gayer is like, you're like a mystery, bro, right? Like, that's because I see you're you, not... and then like, I don't, like, you're there, but you're like, not there. Boston, and then you're like, DC. incognito. Like, I'll be like in the bathroom trying to just relax and, no. and pee, <laughs> and then he'll be right next to me. And the next thing I know, like, I'll be in my car. Like parking. It's because I have urology questions and you won't answer them anywhere else. So I got to follow you into the bathroom. I just do your refills, bro. We're trying to keep the conversations to a minimum. <laughs> I got a question about men mental health, right? I feel like, and maybe I'm biased to, you know, either Ayurveda or yoga and that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that I practice yoga clearly, um, but we put a lot of stress in our culture on mental health and focusing on your mind. And, you know, if your mind is in the right place, then it helps. I'm not going to say cure a lot of diseases, but it definitely prevents it. Or, you know, people might call it placebo in modern medicine, et cetera, et cetera. What are your thoughts on mental health from the perspective of we are forced to get physicals. And when I say forced, I mean, it's obviously recommended. You get a physical every year from your doctor. You get a blood test, you know, every time you go to the physical, they review the results, they put you on whatever, right? It's all based off of that. But there's no routine mental health check that's a part of this. And I feel like that's far more important than even the physical health checkup. But if you, I feel like the industry just hasn't caught on to that. Again, I don't know if I'm saying this from my bias, so I kind of want your opinion. I, I'm just going to correct you. You said forced into these things. No one is forced into anything in healthcare. Uh, agreed. Forced might we, have been the wrong we, term. We definitely, promote, we definitely promote being proactive. There's obviously like guidelines that are evidence-based 
that can really lead to you living a healthy, active lifestyle. But then there's also things that are not outside that are not in the guidelines. You don't even have to go see a doctor to learn them is eat better, be active. Um, and yes, focus on your mental health. Now, there are screening tools that your physician or primary care doctor will use, but you may just not know they're using them. There's actually a form called a review of systems where they ask certain questions, which could be used as a screening way to look for anxiety, depression, and other, other mental health disorders. When you're actually in the room with them, I can actually in the room, even though I'm just First of all, disclaimer, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I am a urologist. So I am the surgeon of the genital urinary tract. But I am one of the rare few in the South Asian community that openly talks about my own personal struggles, whether it's personal, professional, or with my mental wellness. Uh, so I do feel like I'm not an expert, but I do feel like I can be very honest and transparent on this. So when you actually go see your primary care doctor, there are screening things that are done and they are able to kind of de take a dive depending on what your situation is on your mental wellness. But if you're just there for a routine check and you're a normal person and you're saying all the right things, they may not take a deep dive. So yes, is there an opportunity to take a deep dive like they would with your blood pressure or your cholesterol? Absolutely. But mental wellness and mental health overall are communities, some parts of the population, some places where you live, it may be like a taboo thing that no one wants to talk about. You know, I know in our culture, <laughs> you know, nothing's wrong with your head. Just, just yeah, yeah. go and study and what? Like, so it's, it's very, very downplayed. But when you look at the rates of depression, when you look at the rates of anxiety, when you look at um, the rates of other, you know, whether it's alcoholism or whether it's eating disorders, they're very prominent, uh, even in our community. It's just not openly talked about. So really, the answer to your question is very like it's very specific, but nothing is forced on you from a healthcare standpoint. And you can't kind of depend on your once a year visit with your doctor to get everything taken care of physical and mental. You really got to take ownership of your own health and really be your own doctor because you at but the end of the day should be your best biggest advocate. But but mental health mental health is a type of thing where you can't even say it right. That's yeah, <laughs> seriously, and I need it the most. And you, I'm wondering why. I'm wondering why, like, I haven't. I might not have come to that realization, right? Like, I might have. And when I say mental health, I don't mean like, you know, naturally, folks will have a chemical imbalances and they have bipolar or, or schizophrenia or, or something else along those lines, right? Um, and that might be very evident or or it's very apparent to people and those around you to kind of figure that out. I guess what I meant, my question was probably more based on preventative versus um, uh, uh, reactive, right? So, and, and I mean like little things, like if you just end up getting angry a lot or you just struggle when you're stressed or your stress level is like through the roof, preventative things like that kind of being analyzed just doesn't happen enough. Like I might have like serious anger issues. I get pissed off all the time, but there's no medical professional that is approaching me about it. And there's no, I wouldn't even know where to go. And I don't even know if there is a place I should go, you know? So I was just thinking that like, along with your physical, when your doctor tells you, hey, you know, you need to cut some weight. Well, I'm going to correct you when I have to. It is there. You, you may, not, may, not, may not may not just be with the healthcare professional that, that does that. But it's one of those things where you, you do have, it, there's no like way to really screen for it. You have to bring it up. So you mentioned being proactive. Like, this is something that you should be self-aware of at the same time. If this stuff stresses me out, then what, what measures can I take to avoid this? Like, to be very honest with you, like I've been working 14 hours. Uh, I wake up at four 30 and I've been on call at the hospital after this, I have an hour's worth of charting to do, but I committed to doing this with you guys. Right? So I could have been done by now and getting my six or seven hours of sleep, but I committed to this. So, Whose fault is it? Is it Gayer Patel's fault? Is it Yogi's fault? Or is it my fault? It's my fault, right? Because I signed up for this. So there's lots of things that we do that we sign up for that really are the causes of all these stresses. So, you know, you keep going back to, you're, you're kind of like blaming the healthcare system for the lack of awareness on, on mental health, but really it's it's us being really crappy communicators and not being aware of our surroundings and our limits. And 
the mental health issue is getting worse every single day because we are used to our phones. We are used to a, a lifestyle where everything is like high dopamine rush based on flipping or clicking or or swiping. And so our attention spans have gone down. We are so much more likely to compare ourselves to, to others because we see all this like all this prosperity on social media that our colleagues are doing. But the reality is we're, we're all struggling and the devices we're using are affecting our mental wellness. The people that we're hanging out with that may be influencing, influencing us, man, like how come, how come I don't have that Bugatti or influencing us in a neg negative way, but it could also be our procrastination. There's, there's so many different factors. Like it's not just the McDonald's cheeseburger that causes high blood pressure. You can get a cheeseburger a thousand different places. So it's the same thing. The stressors in your life that are causing those imbalances in your life can come from a thousand different places. So I was looking at a, an article on uh, online and it talks about pretty much the answers you gave, which oh, uh, did I write it. A, was it, it, on it you were actually spot on for a lot of it where, you know, mental health, the things that you shouldn't do is hide your feelings, blaming others, which, you know, you just accused him of um, focusing on the bad, um, you know, doing everything alone or trying to people please um, or being involved in toxic relationships. I mean, you pretty much hit most of those right on the head and what you should do. Like is my relationship with you. <laughs> but, but listen, listen, I know you're going to try to twist all this stuff, but here's the thing is mental health is a real real problem, real, real disorder. So I can talk about all these preventative strategies, but there's definitely individuals where you will see zero signs and have to have zero triggers and they may be suffering internally, but it's because, you know, we made it such a taboo thing where they may not be able to open up. Like, I don't know if you've seen like some of the people that commit suicide, which is the most extreme thing that you can do uh, when it comes to your mental wellness. There, there's pictures of them smiling and laughing and playing with their kids just hours before they do it. So they may be the happiest person in the world. They may have the biggest smile, but internally they, they really may be struggling. And it sucks because there's really no way for us to tell. Like there isn't. Because of the social media stuff you talked about, cell phones, um, kind of you know keeping up with the Joneses and all that stuff that we see a, a whole mess of today in society. What do you do with your kids? Do you take a certain approach just to make sure? Uh, again, naturally, I'm not saying that, you know, it, it could be genetic. They could be born with something and there could be an issue. But I assume some of this stuff could be um, based off of experiences in childhood or social media could have an impact on it. Do you do things a little bit differently from the from today's norm with your kids um, just to make sure that they have a good, healthy, you know, life and, and um, their mental health is in the right place or you put the best effort towards that i i don't i don't know if i'm doing everything right i guess we'll see as they as they get older but what we've done with them is you know we have mother we're mother and father but we've tried to be more friends with them especially now they're entering their teenage uh days is so how do you how do you keep that open line of communication open with them and so it comes with kind of sometimes bringing up things that our parents never did and asking them questions about the things going on in school and slowly taking a deep dive. Or sometimes I'll like turn on a podcast that we like listening to that may have a topic that I may want to kind of talk to them about and then bring that up. But I think I've been very fortunate thanks to my wife and the open communication that she's kind of built between us uh, is that we can openly talk about stuff that I never had a chance to talk about. And I don't think a lot of families openly talk about, and that may include relationships between boys and girls or things they may have seen on TV or things like cursing or, you know, why we may not want to wear scandalous clothes when we go to the beach. You know, it's, it, it really is an open conversation, open discussion that we're able to have. And, you know, we're just trying our best. So when it comes to social media, uh, they do not have phones, but we did get them Apple watches. So we kind of met in the middle and we proactively got them Apple watches because all their friends have phones. So I have Instagram accounts, TikTok accounts. I don't know how, I don't know why, what they do to, for the age stuff to get it past it, but we got them Apple watches. So Apple watches can be controlled, but it gives them abilities to call us. It adds location features 
And we slowly started letting them kind of use it to selectively be on chat groups with their friends. And dude, it's open. They're very happy. Like we proactively gave them something um, Mm -hmm. that is technology that they enjoy. And they have their own iPads. But iPads are mostly used for schoolwork. But on the weekends and when we go on vacation, they can use them for other things. So they'll download like a thousand games (laughs) and then movies. But they trust us. I have, I don't think I've seen them do anything that they they shouldn't be doing. Like in this room is where all the iPads charge at night. Their Apple Watches are here too. You know, once in a while they've tried to sneak them into their rooms before they go to sleep, but we have a conversation and bring them here. So we've just been very open and transparent. And yes, one day they're going to want a Facebook account. One day they're going to want an Instagram account. You know, we'll we'll have that conversation. And as long as we trust each other, you know, hopefully... Uh, it'll work out, but I don't know, man. It is, I get stressed out every day. Am I a good dad? You know what the best thing about the watches is when one of them will text me randomly saying hi or yeah. miss you or when you're coming home. Like, cause I've been, I'm so busy throughout the day that my only communication with them used to be in the morning if I see them. And then when I come home and the weekends and there's sometimes days where I don't even see them. There may be like two or three days I'm on call where I'm coming home when they're asleep and I'm leaving before they even get up but this is kind of like open things up where we can send emojis or pictures or we have like a family group and we have separate groups so for us i think it's actually this you know technology these days has broken up families Mm -hmm. but i feel like for us because it's being used as a way that's conducive to our relationship has actually brought us together all right um actually was that boring was that boring boring for you no No. i thought it was supposed to be fun Trust me, it, it's it was fun enough, but I think the stuff this is that like you, so boring. The stuff you spewed out was a lot more useful for other people. We're all mentally fit. That's why it you know it's <laughs> like, I thought this was supposed to be fun.